and let us run with endurance the race set before us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Always, always put God first in your life, and you will have a successful life. to find comfort. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord wants to comfort you. In Psalm 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. God is faithful. He's here for us. We can call on him in prayer, and we can seek out guidance from his word. When we're grieving, we might be tempted at times to think, well, where is God? Is he listening? Is he, is he there? Can he hear me? Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, God also puts other people as his messengers of comfort especially those who have been through similar situations. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 said. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You all are here for one another. This is an opportunity for you to comfort the family and the friends of Maureen. This is an opportunity for you to come together. That's why we do have funeral gatherings and, and memorial services for us to gather together and comfort because all of you have been through similar situations, have lost people that you love. Death is unfortunately a part of life and we've all been touched in some way shape or form so we know what grieving's like we know what loss is like we know what that deep pit feels like in our stomach when we hear of someone we love or witness someone we love leaving us so i would encourage each one of you to be there for one another to comfort one another the next thing we think of when we're grieving the loss of a loved one is we start to think about the loved one. We think about what they meant to us, the time we spent together, what we learned from them, what they passed down. Obviously, you see all the pictures, the slideshow, <laughs> the memories. We never want those memories to pass with our loved one. I want to invite Maureen's daughter, uh, Shannon, and her sister, Caroline, up, and they're going to share a little bit this, this afternoon about their mom. My mom as you all know, is an amazing woman. She is with her Heavenly Father, and I thank God for that because my mom was my prayer warrior. Something happened, I called mommy. Every day, I would be at work, and I would get a text between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. telling me, I got this. Push through, I'm beautiful, and she's praying me through. And it always came with a Bible verse or something inspirational. The last one she sent me. Faith doesn't always take you out of the problem. Faith takes you through the problem. Faith doesn't always take away the pain. Faith gives you the ability to handle the pain. That's right. Faith doesn't always take you out of the storm. Faith calms you in the midst of the storm. That was who my mom was. And my mom was a strong woman of God. One more she sent.
of God didn't promise days without pain, laughter without sorrow, or sun without rain, but he did promise strength for the day, for the day, comfort for the tears, and light for the way. If God brings you to it, he will surely see us through it. My mom loved, and she loved deep, and she loved hard. Her children, her baby boy, was the light of her life. And then she was blessed with 10 amazing grandbabies who she would have done anything for. Remember my mom is faith in Christ. Remember her as the strong, godly woman she is. And know that if you want to see my mom again, you need to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. My mom's waiting for all of us to get to heaven. So please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And this is something that my mother had um, with her mother. Your mother is always with you. She's the whisper of the leaves as you walk down the street. She's the smell of certain foods you remember, flowers you pick, the fragrance of life itself. She's the cool hand on your brow when you're not feeling well. She's your breath in the air on a cold winter's day. She is the sound of the rain that lulls you to sleep, the colors of a rainbow. She is Christmas morning. Your mother lives inside your laughter. She's the place you came from, your first home. And she's the map you follow with every step you take. She's your first love, your first friend, even your first enemy. But nothing on earth can separate you. Not time, not space, not even death. My mother gave me a book when my children were young called I Love You Forever. And that meant a lot to her that I read that to the kids. I still have it. She wrote in it for me, of course. But the ending of that is when the child becomes the parent. And he says, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mom will love you. Thank you to both of you. I know how difficult that is to get up and share about your mom in this time. The final thing we naturally think about when we're at a funeral is we start to think about what type of life that we're living. Am I making a difference? What will people say about me? What does my life mean to others? Ephesians 2.10 tells us this, we are God's workmanship created for good works. That means if we want our lives to have an impact, doing good is the way that happens. Being kind, compassionate, putting others before ourselves, and looking for every opportunity to do good will bring meaning and fulfillment in your life. But there is a common misconception that most people have when they hear about doing good things. Many people think that if I do more good things on earth than bad things, that I'll go to heaven when I die. And that's a common misconception because the truth is, in order to gain entrance into heaven, we would have to be perfect because nothing unholy can be in the presence of God. So even if we do more good than bad, we still can't get to heaven on our own. But that's where the good news about Jesus comes in. Because the Bible teaches us that God loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to pay the price on the cross for our sins. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus was able to pay for our sins because he had no sin of his own. He was the perfect sacrifice. His shed blood washed away our sins when we trust in him. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says this, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works that no one can boast. Now, some ask, how do you know this is true? 
Well, it's a historical fact that Jesus rose from the grave, and that validates the truth in the scriptures, because Jesus actually said of himself, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. When Jesus rose from the grave, he was showing us that he has power over death, and because of that, all who believe in him will be raised in heaven for eternity. I'm so thankful that Maureen trusted in Jesus, Amen. that he, she had a strong faith in him. And she lived that out. And she showed that to her family and to her friends. And those, those acts of faith validate the fact that she truly trusted in Jesus. And Maureen believed that with 100% certainty. The good news for her is that she's experiencing paradise right now yes. Amen. she's experiencing that revelation 21 4 says this god will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things Amen. have passed away let's pray heavenly father i'm thankful for the life of maureen i'm thankful that she trusted in you the most important decision that she could ever make, she made, and now she's reaping the benefits of that decision. Yes. Lord, we pray for the family that you would comfort them. I pray for each person here that they would do some soul searching and think about their faith, what they believe in about you. We know that faith is a personal decision, not something that any, think anyone can force on us. So we just pray, Lord, that you would just help each one of us here to evaluate our own spiritual lives. Lord, I pray for the family as they grieve, as the days kind of seem long and the weeks and the months will seem long at times, but to know that you are right there with them, guiding them and comforting them. I pray that they would keep the memories of Maureen alive, all the good that she did in their lives and all of the faith that she had, I pray that they would practice as well. I'm just thankful again for this day, for the life of Maureen, and for each person that's here to bring comfort to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's a damn good thing to go to Agatha and thing anymore. Yeah, really. Keep them in bed with some much of us. The girls did. Agatha. We taught her well. Oh, oh yeah. She has, like, they were trying to pass it. They were trying to find a video on her phone. She had 38,000 oh. pictures. I can only wow. No, 70. She's got to have a, how much cloud space do you have to buy? You know? I don't know. That's Max. That's my boy. That's Maximus. That's Uncle Steve's boy. That's his boy. He loves Uncle Steve. Who wants to wear? I know that you're not. And we're in the space. And they think they're lap dogs. You know what I mean? It's like ridiculous. Look at that. She did. I did. Because of the jacket, I'm retired. Yeah. No, I'm almost stopped. I'm stopped. I know what you mean. Oh, wow. I just remember going up there. Are you done? <laughs> 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 I love you because you're a strange man. You know, and I need that. I know that. I wish I was closer to you. Yeah, what's your story? Yeah, it's always good now. I was talking about you the other day. Right here. So, it came up about you, you were going to be an actualist. Yeah. And then you're not an actualist. I think broken. Yeah. <laughs>